What is this place? Behold, my son, this is the downfall of civilization. Rome has fallen, yet there is hope. There still remains one final refuge, a last stand of the Western Romans. And so welcome to the Soissons campaign. This campaign is definitely one of the hardest among all CK3 campaigns I've ever played, if not even the hardest. We are playing as King Afrianus of Soissons. Uh, let's say, not totally bad character. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Bro, you have one intrigue. What the hell? In itself, intrigue is not exactly useful in our situation, but the fact that I'm so bad at it is of course twice as annoying. And so I went for stewardship, as my plan was to develop a strong protected Roman outpost before expanding at all. And fortunately, I already knew what would be waiting for me in the near future. I had little time to prepare and the status of my provinces was rather bad than good. Nevertheless, I tried to prepare myself as much as possible for what was about to come, trying to develop as quickly as possible, and therefore eliminated all unnecessary costs. In good old Roman fashion, I also adopted the autocratic ways, as I just can't get enough of these three bad boys. Facing not only problems with my vassals, but also the pressure of enlarging the army to survive in the future, I couldn't be busier. At least my army was strong enough to fight off plundering neighbors, so that boosted my morale. Nice. It took some time, but through an upcoming boost in the development and income, I was able to build a solid foundation for my army. But I wasn't prepared for what was about to come over me. Now, it's all or nothing. In order to have any chance against the more than four times bigger force, I needed allies. Which is why I'd waited until now with my marriage to make sure to get the strongest alliance out there. We have to do a pact with the devil in this case. Yep. But even with the assistance of the Visigoths, the war was not easy. And on my own, I had no bloody chance. Okay, maybe we should fucking run. As my forces got almost stack wiped in the first contact, which I could just barely avoid. This was just the beginning. And the Visigoths had only sent a tiny piece of their force as they had a riot going on in their own country. Hello there. I need support guns. I need everything. It wasn't going good. And it was just the beginning of the war. And the empire's treasury was already almost empty which will make my armies even weaker. All just a matter of time. And there was another severe problem. Steve, a powerful ally and the heir to the throne. Since I was about to face red numbers anyway, I granted his wish. Now I was in debt. Had 18K angry barbarians at my gates, sieging their way into the country and the Visigoths came to support me with 1,600 men. But there was hope, as the Visigoths had crushed their riot after some time, and now could assist us with all of their power. And because of attrition, after some time, the barbarians had now a slightly inferior force. There was something else that worried me a little. And while I waited for the arrival of my allied forces, the barbarians made continued progress. Whenever I had a chance, I made a small conquest to free lost land and keeping the war score as low as possible. The trouble in the country had caused riots among the unhappy population, so I decided to deal with them first. Successfully, the uprising was put down, but it resulted in my army suddenly being trapped in the capital. They managed to free themselves, oh my god, but were massacred as soon as they reached the next city, with only a few managing to escape the slaughter. Through this accident, the barbarians now absolutely dominated in numbers, 
and I couldn't prevent the sacking of their capital. And so we lost important Roman artifacts to these wild animals. I could do nothing but watch. I had gained money through inheritance, which I invested directly in mercenaries as I needed every soldier I could possibly get. During a maneuver around the enemy forces, part of my allies got lost. Oh my god, what are they doing now? And were slaughtered in a nearby forest. However, I managed to trap some enemy forces as well. Sadly, they managed to pin me down long enough for the enemy's main force to arrive and send us to heaven. Without the capital and only half of the army, the odds were absolutely against us. But giving up would mean the end for Rome in the West. And so this was no option. Instead, I gathered all the forces that were left for one final attack on the split up forces of the enemy. It was all or nothing, attacking a weaker general during a siege. And through the braveness of the soldiers, we achieved victory in our weakest moment, losing no time, also freeing the capital. This was a huge relief and gave me time to think about the next steps. Nope, no tournament right now. <laughs> I'm kinda busy. Now I flipped the board and attacked the barbarians during their sieges. While my troops dominated the battlefield, the capital was covered in tragedy. As I was disfigured from a vassal who ended up killing himself. An action which represented well how dramatic these times were. But the show must go on. And so I ruled with my new drip better than ever before. Minor victories and battles followed. But war is unpredictable and anything can change within the blink of an eye. Now the future is uncertain and the already wavering stability was crushed into pieces. No one wanted an alliance and within a couple days the kingdom was on the brink of a civil war. That's the proof we're still Romans. It may seem hopeless, but in fact the invaders armies were reduced to the size of our own. Facing this world of chaos, it's easy to lose hope. But Aegeus, Aegeus, oh my god. But Aegidius was the complete opposite. Gaining traits like humble and wise men at the age of nine years old. Bro's already outperforming 50% of Roman emperors before him. Also finding his first true love but marrying the princess of Illyria for a strong alliance with the remaining Romans. Although superior in numbers, I lost the next important battle and thus weakening the kingdom even more. Fuck. In the company of Martinia, Agidius made further development, although the times were rough. But if you want a rainbow, you have to deal with the rain. But the rain slowly transformed into a massive thunderstorm as more and more raiders used our weaknesses to plunder and destroy our cities. And even more tragic was the loss of the Roman culture in the neighboring areas. By finally coming of age and only knowing a world of war and destruction, Agidius had developed some massive talent in diplomacy and stewardship, using it to make more friends at the court and strengthening relations with his loved ones. But even if I improve, the AI will always be the AI. I really tried my best to make friends and stabilize the court while winning battles and developing my knowledge to prevent a civil war. But the roots were already too deep. And so there was nothing to prevent the tragedy that was about to come to our already crumbling kingdom. Well, the reality was kind of disappointing at first. Bruh. But more vassals joined the rebellion. Furthermore, I lost my wife during a siege, which gave me the possibility to marry the person I loved since childhood. But that would not help the country right now. And so Agidius did what had to be done, putting his personal wishes aside behind the kingdom's wealth. And first hope was coming up again with the death of the faction leading vassal. However, this was just another piece of the puzzle as not one but two other peasant revolts joined in on the fight. Giving up was no option. My armies were crippled, yet hope was not gone. I achieved two absolute victories over two peasant commanders and could end the uprisings quickly. 
now preparing to advance towards the barbarian homeland and forcing them to surrender. But more tragedy was to come. As Aegidius marched upon the barbarians, his disloyal vassals managed to conquer the capital and taking what was the most important to him. But this anger gave him strength to push himself over his limits and finally capturing and ending this 20 year long bloodshed, changing the course of history forever. I further invested in diplomatic skills and now was pushing to end the civil war. Minor victories followed and Aegidius was just able to escape an assassination during his campaign. Still, he managed to conquer the enemy's capital but 20 years of war and no time to really regroup had left the army with deep scars, forcing it to retreat against the superior main army of the enemy. Sometimes you just can't change the course of history and with the last blunder of the AI, the war was lost. However, Soissons had even, if covered in ruins, survived this hell. Finally, it was peace. This gave me the time to make reforms, stabilizing my remaining territory, most importantly reducing the army cost and developing the completely destroyed provinces. But when the current king suddenly redescended me from the royal court and started a war against the neighbors, oh I realized I had no time to waste to get back in power before our nation would be destroyed forever. Now, also being attacked by other nations, I had to act quickly. My armies alone were no threat, but with the support of still loyal vassals, we managed to send an ultimatum. And luckily, it worked. Within just a few years, I was back in power. Now it was time to rebuild Rome. But this task is coming with a massive undertaking, since almost every part of our land lies in ruins due to the wars. It meant long discussions with my vassals, secure the safety of our lands, take care of murderers and betrayals at court, as well as securing the continuation of the bloodline and taking care of my kids' education. The main focus, however, lied on the rebuilding and defense of our holy land. Even though I had plans for future expansions, I waited to avoid war at all costs and focused all energy on rebuilding and strengthening the remaining Roman lands, which also included the imperial laws. And to make the building progress even more efficient, I reorganized the imperial court's focus, which offered plenty of support in this area. Besides, it was a massive advantage that we were Christians, which of course is the only true religion, but besides that, I could demand absurd amounts of gold from the Pope. But while I was focused on rebuilding, I couldn't have been more surprised when I looked at the map the next time. As a massive barbarian empire named the oh god, Vistula Kingdom, I hope I pronounced that right, <clears throat> had formed in the east and forced its way into the middle and western Europe. Under the leadership of Godeok, Europe was faced with a second Attila, as he was without a doubt the greatest warrior alive. Even more concerning was the fact that we shared a border. At first, I didn't mind, but when my son suddenly got murdered, I realized the seriousness of the situation. I decided to educate my second son to become a strong warrior, someone who can lead Rome into battle, into a greater future. Time went by, and Godeo continued his conquests with frightening speed. But even in the blink of a second, the great leader disappeared. No one knew how or why, but the reality now was that there were three new but weaker kingdoms, ruled by his three sons. Although this was clearly a relief, the dynasty Goryeok had created still remained and was about to shape Europe's history massively. Now that things had settled again, I made new reforms and enlarged the army with tradition and also some cavalry. To further strengthen the connection between me and my people, I announced a great tour, visiting a lot of my vassals. Man, I can't wait to abuse this feature and send my emperor across the whole world. Times were changing and with Soissons leaving the Western Romans, other Roman protectors rejoined under the banner. I also can't deny an offer from such a drippy person. Damn! Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night so I just keep writing. Important achievements for Rome. 
but by paying attention on the map, the east once again became a rising danger since Gordehog's son had reunited almost all the lands and now commanded a force around 10,000 men. Considering that he is still young, everything is possible. Threatened by the fear in the east, more Roman successors started to rejoin under our banner, which gave me confidence for the future. My son had grown to a great warrior. The Roman lands were almost clear of conflict and developed with a rising speed, especially in the capital. Furthermore, I had plans, powerful plans. I founded a first holy order and furthermore developed the cities. But it was also time to reclaim what was rightfully belonging to us. With an almost flawless victory, I required the first lands for Rome. But military success was incredibly important considering the latest advances of our neighbors and whatever Britannia is doing here. But overall, things were looking great and so it was time to inform the next generations how Rome survived this tragedy with a book. And while my writer finished the book, I made sure Rome continued to prosper. Despite all the efforts, another tragedy occurred. My son, and I have no idea how, had left the Roman paths and joined the dark side of the force. No, but seriously, how is that possible? Anyway, in the end, I had no other option but to remove him as my heir, as no barbarian should ever sit on a Roman throne ever again. But otherwise, another successful emperor had strengthened Rome's borders and made sure the dream called Rome lived on. Knowing he had played his role well, he closed his eyes. Rome will live. Hopefully. With King Apartheus and with him a completely new generation ascended the throne. Things were changing. He continued to focus on the empire's wealth and enlargement of the empire's forces. Knowing that his country was the only country that accepted Roman traditions and honored the right god in the west. So he thought of establishing a fourth world-shaping empire, much like Caesar and Augustus did their time. To achieve this, he departed from the peaceful ways of his ancestors, um, I mean, of the current ancestors, of course. And initiated an invasion of a neighboring state. However, this war was also driven by strategic thinking, aiming to prevent the further expansion of America. Sounds like America. Anyway, to celebrate this achievement, I announced the first big grand tournament in the capital. It was a big success, and the crowd was a buzz with favor and enthusiasm. Everyone's eyes lighting up with excitement. Contributing to the joy was the fact that I managed to win a contest. After holding the award ceremony and crowning a barbarian warlord to the winner of the melee combat, eh, I continued to improve the infrastructure and then decided to meet up with the boys and go to a hunt together. First, we had plenty of fun, but after some short time, the situation flipped and suddenly, well, let's just say I underestimated the power of nature. Hey, but at least I have a trophy, or my son has it now, who is now forced to also rule the kingdom at the age of 13. I wonder what could go wrong. The first thing I did was securing the blood quality of the family and making an alliance with the kingdom of Italy to strengthen each other for the case that Regia decided to expand again as they still opposed a threat. But then happened what would go down as history's greatest comeback and revenge of all time. Oh shit, not good. So Carthage had managed to conquer Rome and reviving itself from the death, but also the rest of the world was thriving. East Rome was doing great so far. The Iranians also had no bigger trouble for now and the Indian nations 
once again tried to unify their country. Please don't mess up this time, okay? I developed the courtroom and expanded my man-at-arms. Then I decided to expand the empire to the Corona River and make a natural border which would be easier to defend. Unfortunately, I took a little too much inspiration from the oh Indian God. methods. Oh, hell no, man. And so instead of closing a little gap that was created, I decided to advance further south to get another connection to the sea. Also making progress and reclaiming further Roman parts. And with the strength of my armies, the next victory was achieved. And furthermore, a connection to the Mediterranean Sea. Now that the war was over, I realized Britannia's armies raiding my lands. We were friends a couple years ago, but we were. Even though they had an impressive force, I marched upon them and even sailed to Britannia to get my revenge. <laughs> Maybe I overreacted. Besides the recently conquered areas, I had managed to keep the country under control quite well. And most of the vassals were happy. And then in one of my travels, I experienced a lot of the rings crossover. It's Frodo, guys. Time passed. One day was like the other. When suddenly, something changed drastically. But when I realized, it was already too late. <gasps> so now I was once again challenging Rome's future with a boy ruling the country. The first thing I did was to secure some strong alliances. And even though I tried my best, my vassals hated me. And the first factions to replace me had already formed quickly and threatened to escalate in a large scale civil war once again. After a successful start in the war, my armies made a final mistake that resulted in losing a major and very important battle instead of winning it. And on top of the defeat, I was excommunicated by the Pope. I tried to regroup, but again, I stood no chance. And even with new allies, the power difference was just too big. So in the end, I had to admit my defeat. I still had some territories and power left, which my leech couldn't take me. Fortunately, his army was not significantly larger than mine. And so I prioritized the rebuilding of my cities. But the king had realized that I was a danger and sent me an ultimatum to get rid of me forever. But I had nothing to lose at this point. And together with my most loyal allies, I marched on the empire's new capital. After a mind-blowing victory, I defeated the royal armies and was able to take the city. But I did not stop there and conquered city after city until the current king gave up. Nice. This led to his daughter ascending the throne, but she was weak. And so I saw my chance to reclaim the throne. But turns out I was not the only one with that intention. Being under pressure, I sent my demands, but the queen denied. So it was war once again. At least that's what I thought. Cause as I was marching on the capital once again, I received news. Bad news. He granted him... <sighs> uh <-huh. laughs> I was so close. But shortly after, something magical happened. And I was given a third chance to reclaim the throne. And this time, I would not leave it to chance. And made all I could to crush and conquer the capital, which this time was successful. Finally. However, a lot of vassals were not as happy as I was to see me wow, back in power. So the kingdom went to its fourth civil war in one year. Damn, we are truly Romans. But surprisingly, right. the attack of my vassals had not much to offer. And I could win against their forces easily. So that I even had the time to help some allies in Britannia afterwards. And also triumph there. By the way, this is quite a special area. So Rome was finally at peace again, which I used to check out what was going on in the rest of the world. And without me noticing it, the Middle East had transformed into one of the biggest conflicts ever. I was witnessing how India was in the process of conquering the Iranian Empire. I also expanded my borders slightly to the left, so I had a better protection against Spanish invaders. 
However, the tension in the Middle East was about to truly explode. Eastern Rome was enlarged in the brutal civil war, and I too was set to play a role through my allies there. Oh my god, we're... Oh god, we... Oh my god, we have to help. It's a dilemma, and I don't want to hurt the Romans. First of all, they never help us. Second of all, we are more or less an own culture by now. It's been hundreds of years. We're not the same anymore. Like, look at them. They are Hellenic. We are still Gallo-Roman. So there is a huge difference, actually. Additionally, the expansion driven by the teachings of Allah had begun to spread uncontrollably fast and with a scary efficiency. Simultaneously, in Eastern Rome, the greatest realms of the West had come together to fiercely battle over the future of the Romans. Me and my allies managed to get the upper hand in the war and managed to lay siege on Constantinople. But King Epatrius happened what? to die during that siege and so I saw my part in the war is done. His son was now in charge, who was a skilled tactician and could directly prove that by defending a small uprising against him. The future of our country was looking bright for the first time. Time passed, oh. but the war in the Middle East was still going. Rome had lost the majority of its holdings, and the Great Prophet had almost all of Arabia under control, while India had actually managed to defeat the Great Iranian Empire. Crazy. And that is where this story ends. Not because I wanted it to, but because I lost access to my CK3, and in the process of regaining it, I sadly lost the save file. So is there something we can do, you may ask? No, there's nothing we can do.